and welcome to my channel and this I'm Stephanie and this is the a week five of 2019 January the 27th through February the second weekly book review <music> said this is the week five uh weekly wrap-up book review things that I read this week so I have really decided on doing these uh, weekly uh, wrap-up things um in order so even though this is week five and it crosses over in between two months January and February um yeah, that's how they're going to be numbered for the rest of the year is it's just going to be whatever week it is is that's the number it's going to be for the week and then I'll give you the dates. I'll just make sure that I give you the dates so that you know when it's going to show up. And then of course I link all of these in my weekly wrap up or my monthly wrap ups as well. So yeah. Um, now the only thing with that is that if a monthly wrap up comes in between like the end of the week well actually at the end of the month it wouldn't it wouldn't work that way it would actually be out so this one is going to get linked into january's wrap up and we're already in the february so yeah disregard that anyways you're here to find out what i read last week i read eight books last week even though it was our first week back for the government from the government shutdown um, if you didn't know, the government reopened temporarily for three weeks, uh, to see if they can figure something out in our government, the United States government. Uh, there is the possibility that we might close again in, after February 15th. So, who knows? We don't know. I don't know. I don't weigh in on it. I just go with the punches as it is. But, uh, yeah. So let's get on to what I read last week. Last week was pretty busy with the reading, as I said, eight books. And the first book that I read last week was Anti Stepbrother by Tijin. And I placed this in New Adult. I did read it for 24 and 48. Um, I give this book four stars. I give it two Steam fans. And I listened to it in audiobook. As I said, I read it for 24 and 48, which is a readathon over the weekend where you just try and read as much as you can in 24 hours. And I did succeed in that. And um, I posted a vlog on that. So you guys should already know that I did 24 hours and two minutes, I think it was, or something like that, because the stopwatch that I used resets at 24 um that was real annoying so I stopped at that point I didn't keep going because it was just like <sighs> painful but back to anti-stepbrother this book follows Summer and Kaden Summer is this young girl that is in her sort of teenage well not teenage young adult years new adult years um, in college, she's a freshman in college, she had a huge crush on her stepbrother who goes to this college and she thought, oh, I'll go to the same college as him and then we can, you know, hook up. This also qualifies for my romance genre-thon for January under requ unrequited love because stepbrother is not feeling Summer and Summer has to, like, get over herself. Well, she comes, come to find out there's a young man that is her stepbrother's frat brother named Caden, and he kind of helps her get over that. Um, I did enjoy the story. I did have to take my full adult hat off and remember that these kids are in college. They're going to do stupid things. They're going to think stupid ways. So once I did that and took that hat off and was like, okay, let's just go for the enjoyment of the story. Let's see how this plays out. I did enjoy the story, which is why I gave it four stars overall. Um, it is very trope filled and there are times that I wanted to like reach into the story and be like, ah, Summer, why are you doing that? Or Caden, why are you doing that? But it was a good, fun story to listen to really, really quickly. The next 
thing that I read was Cocky Bastard by Penelope Ward and Vi Keelan. I also, uh, I place this in rom-com. I give this one four stars. It does get four Steam fans. A little steamy there. Um, I listened to it on audiobook. I did listen to it for 24 and 48 hours. Uh, this book follows Aubrey, who is going from Chicago to California on a road trip, and she ends up having this issue with Chance. Yes, his name is Chance, uh, who is this Australian guy that is really hot and sexy, what have you. He's on a motorcycle at this road stop that Aubrey ends up taking, and they end up going on the road trip together. And this is sort of her story, and then fast forward a couple years, and then his story about why they broke up, and uh, it was... So I think I would have enjoyed it a little bit more had I just read it because the female narrator's voice for Chance was more Australian than the male na male's narrator's voice was for Chance. It was weird. I just, I wasn't feeling Chance's voice. I wasn't feeling Chance when the male narrator did part two for this story. And I was like, I'm not feeling it not feeling it but that's okay the overall story of it I did enjoy Aubrey's a lawyer she decided to move take a road trip take a different job and meets up with Chance they have this journey their sexual banter and chemistry is off the charts and it's back and forth so they get to know each other and Aubrey has this like bad track record with men and it, yeah it's just a fun little cute little something or another that I listened to for 24 and 48 real quick. It was nice to my ears. It was good. The next thing I listened to or read was Hard Press Calvet's Cove number two by Kate Canterbury. I placed this in contemporary. I give it 4.5 stars. I give it five steam fans. So hot. So very hot. I listened to it on audiobook. I did listen to this for 24 and 48 as well. Did I? No, I didn't listen to this. I listened to this after 24 and 48 was over. But I did listen to it for Romance genre -thon for Unrequited Love. Because in this story, you have Annette from the first Talbot's Cove story, Fresh Catch, who was lusting after Owen, this is sort of after she finally gives in to the fact that Owen is gay and he is never going to like her and never going to be with him and things like that. So Annette is this like sassy librarian bookshop owner persona. She's super independent, and you would think that she would have it all together, but then she has these family members that just want to beat her down, and it's like, ugh, why? And this town of Talbot's Cove is, like, super small. It's a small town in Maine, and they, they are very special, very special. They, they, they definitely love Annette for her cooking and for her desserts and for how sweet she is, and she just doesn't see it, and her family just doesn't enforce it as well. So we have this brand new sheriff named Jackson, and he comes to town. He notices Annette, like, right off the bat, and is like, oh, oh, yeah. But the former sheriff told him, there shall be no hanky-panky with the natives. Don't be coming in here, uh, you know, messing around, being a womanizer. But he noticed Annette. The station for the sheriff's department is right across the street from her bookshop, so he gets to watch her come in and loves her style, loves her flair, and, you know, she ends up getting drunk the night she finally comes to terms with the fact that Owen isn't going to be with her, and Jackson comes over to the bar to take Annette home, but she doesn't, she's so sloppy drunk, she doesn't know where her keys are, and he doesn't feel right taking her home to her house, so he takes her to his house, and, oh, yes, their sexual chemistry is off the chart. I was a little annoyed by all of the definitions in the beginning of each chapter. Each chapter is a definition, 
for a word but then once you get into the story you start understanding why those definitions are there or you know what the sort of chapter is going to be talking about they're all food related so then it ended up being fun and I really enjoyed this story and uh, I wish there were more Talbot's Cove stories Kate where's my where's my other stories because I want to know more about Talbot's Cove now makes me want to find a small town in Maine to go hang out and, and chill in right the next thing I read was perfectly scripted which is scripted book number two in the scripted duets uh series duets duets it's a duet oh my god I'm so flustered right now uh by Christy Pastore and uh, I place this in contemporary I give this one 4.5 stars I give it five steam fans and I listen or I read it as an arc oh my goodness so this is the conclusion to Holiday and Ronan's story. Now, before I had told you guys, I knew of Ronan and Holiday as a couple from other Christy Pastore books. They do make mention in some other books, so I knew they had a happily ever after. But oh my goodness, the struggle that it took to, for them to get to where they were, where I knew them, was amazing amazing this is their conclusion and you start off doing a flashback of the trauma that holiday had when she was younger and what she has to deal with or what she hinted at when she was talking to ronan in unscripted you know sort of let him in to say hey this is what my background is this is why i'm friends with grady and you know let's communicate and you know have this relationship but at the same time I don't know if I can have this relationship with you because you are in the spotlight you're this big time Hollywood actor and I don't want to have my past hinder your future and having them work that that dynamic out was just amazing because it was so realistic in that it really talks about the fact that in a relationship in a real life relationship you have to have communication and the two of them at times I wanted to like reach in and be like holiday what are you doing why just just talk to the man just let him know you you were right there you were already doing it just a minute ago just continue to communicate with Ronan and you know have at it and then at times I was like Ronan don't let her don't don't take don't stand for that no no, bro, you need to get to it and, you know, work it out, work it out. In the end, of course, I got my happy labor ending and I know how it all ends and it was just beautiful and I love it. It makes me want to go back and read all of the other Christy Pastore books so that I can, like, just be in love with my couples again because they're amazing and all of them are so super realistic and this one was too. The next thing I read was Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I placed this in Contemporary Women's Lit because technically, I mean, it could could just be a regular contemporary, but <sighs> I give this one 3.5 stars. I Zero Steam fans because I didn't feel no steam at all whatsoever, like at all. Um, I listened to it on audiobook. I read it for Romance genre -thon Under Pregnancy, um, which is a little different. I'm not going to tell you how that kind of goes in there. But this book, this story follows Hannah. Hannah is like a 29-year-old that has been floundering in her life, and her family lives in England but she sort of made a home with her friend Gabby in LA. She's been all over the place. She has no real, you know, uh, ambition, I guess you could say, at this point when she moves back to LA with her friend Gabby, who was married to a guy. I can't remember his damn name because it just got all kinds of crazy. So this story really encompasses that whole what if this one moment in my life I had chosen something else to do? So when when Hannah gets back to L.A., she goes out with Gabby, and there's two different paths that she could take. She could 
either go with her childhood uh like boyfriend crush kind of guy Ethan or she could go home with Gabby and her husband well in this story you get both of those timelines of what if and sweet baby Jesus I wish I had read sort of the synopsis on this to know that I was going to have such horrible horrible whiplash because that shit was crazy back and forth this timeline that timeline this timeline that timeline this oh my god crazy and it just ugh, ugh, ugh. it's one of those things that if it's not done well it's just crap and that's what this was for me it wasn't i shouldn't say it's not it's not crap it's crap for me i didn't like it um I still gave it 3.5 stars because it had a good sort of message, but I wouldn't torture myself to read that again. No. The next book that I read was Securing Brunei. Make sure I get that right. By Susan Stoker. I place this in erotic short story. I give this book four stars. I give it four Steam fans. And it comes from get ready for it read me romance read read me romance my podcast the podcast the podcast yes 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 oh my goodness these ladies picked a really good one for this week susan stoker is known for her military suspense stories and oh my goodness she totally delivers in this one and this is about a mature couple our main male character, Dag, is 50 years old. He's been in the military for, like, ever. And this is, you know, his story with his wifey of 23-plus years. Yes. And they still got the sexual heat going. It was hot. And it was realistic. And it's about a mature couple. I loved it. And then there was this, like, level of suspense that was thrown in there. I was like, yes, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Short story and all, I'm here for it. Susan put her foot into it, as always, when it comes to the military and having accuracy. And, you know, even though it was super short, the accuracy was there and it was great. I loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Loved it. The next thing I read was The Poet's X by Elizabeth as a veto and I place this in poetry slash young adult young adult poetry uh, I give this book four stars no steam fans none whatsoever um and I read this for romance genre I thought because by this time uh it was the end of the week and we were already into February and February is all about African-American main characters and authors so it gets that title as well um and this book or this story these poems follow Sidomara and I'm super glad that I did not read this physically because I would have went absolutely nuts because Sidomara is spelled with an x I think it's like x i o m a r a i think if i spell that right i would have never ever 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 pronounced it correctly as one of her poetry pieces who said about you know teachers in school and what have you no it's an own voices so i really can't get into the weeds of it but i mean Yeah, when I finish this, I have feelings. Um, it definitely takes a look at sort of that different culture of life. Um, everyone says that it's Afro-Latinx, and I'm not seeing it because I don't remember if they said that her dad was African-American. So I'm trying to figure out where the Afro comes in because her mother is Dominican Republic or Dominican. So unless her dad was African American to make it Afro Latinx, it would actually just be Lat 
18 net I don't mm. I'm not even trying to get in into the weeds there don't come after me don't come at me the synopsis and Elizabeth herself says that she's afro latinx so she makes the category and there um but they're catholic and they have some very strict sort of rules that her mother puts on her she has a twin brother and he's going through some things and she's trying to sort of navigate her mom really puts her down and because she, jeans family jeans i mean you can't it, it kind of it kind of put me in my own in my past headspace with the sort of thinking of you know because you're well developed and as a female well developed boobs but all that curviness stuff you know at a young age because i want to say uh Cita Marta is 16, 17 years old. So because she is well developed and curvy and things like that, it's her fault that men want to, um, you know, hook up with her. They only want sex. And because she likes a boy, she's a hoe now. And I was, just, whew, those are feelings that, you know, I don't, I think we should have learned, we should learn, learn parents we should learn from this book these thoughts um from this young woman that obviously went through this type of thing and some of us have went through that type of thing because yeah i went through it with my mother being very religious and uh not catholic but very religious in the church and things like that so who it it's an interesting look its own voices so these are these words are built off of her own experiences so yeah i i get it i feel it it's definitely a good look as a parent thank the lord not to a girl no offense to y'all that have girls but i'm glad i don't have a girl um yeah I, mm, yeah yeah it's it's hard hitting. It really is. It's if you don't, if you're not someone that like likes poetry um, or that feels poetry, I definitely say get the audiobook for this because Elizabeth narrates it. She puts the timing that is needed to make it a short story. That last poem, I didn't get. I didn't get that shit. I felt like I was deja vu in for the last like three chapters or something like that because she like read it and then she read it again it, nah! that was a little annoying but i was like okay whatever that must be something that has to do with the book so i'm getting the book from my library so i can like physically look at it but then i'm gonna turn it back in but yeah um i also read that for blackathon which is the group read and those are my thoughts on it okay yep there's that um, let's see. Next, I read, and the final book that I read for, uh, week number five of, of 2019 was The Ballerina and the Fighter by Ursula Sinclair. I give this book four stars. I give it two Steam fans. I do place this in New Adult. Uh, this book follows Ivy and Maze, who meet on the beach of an island resort, or a, not an island, a vacation resort oh my goodness so ivy is like a 17 18 year old kid that is vacationing with her best friend and they're on the resort they're in an enclosed area and they're dancing on the beach what have you maze is taking a run he's 19 20 years old he's running on the beach and sees these lit young ladies doing dance moves and looking all beautiful and things like that He's a white boy, and he's into mixed martial arts. His mother and a Chinese-American male raised him in the uh, uh, Baltimore area. Wow. His mother dies, and, you know, he's left to be raised by a um, Asian male, Chinese-Asian male. And the two of them have like a summer together, 
Ivy and Maze. And then they, tragedy hits, they sort of try and move on. They don't want to do the long distance thing because Maze is in China learning mixed martial arts and different secrets of his family. And Ivy goes on to be this big time dancer in New York. Maze ends up coming back to New York, meets up with Ivy, and their sort of story reinvents itself. They get to know each other a little bit more. And some secrets are told and things are revealed. People's guilt and things like that from the tragedies that happen. Yeah. It was interesting. I did enjoy it. There is another book. Um, it There's another book in the duet, I think it is. But I don't know that I'm going to get to that one because I didn't feel that I, I don't feel I need to. It says that it's the conclusion to their story, but I didn't feel like it left off on a cliffhanger. So there's that. Oh, I also read that for, I said, Blackathon and Romance Genrethon. There we go. On to what I am currently reading. I am currently reading Fifty Shades of Jungle Fever by L.V. Lewis. I'm reading that for Blackathon and, of course, Romance Genrethon. One, because it's an African-American author, and of course it has an African-American main character in that it is a very, um, I want to say I'm about 20% in, and I definitely can see how it is, I don't know if it's fan fiction or if it is just really based off of Fifty Shades of Grey with a urban spin to it. Our main female character's name is Keisha, so that doesn't have any correlation to Anna. But she has these two little little subconsciouses, Double G and what is the freaky goddess or something or another. <laughs> it's just showing me that I should have been annoyed with that in Fifty Shades of Grey because it is so overwhelming in this this play off of 50 that I'm just like how did I not notice that before it's really annoying it's really annoying yep my freaking goddess said this my double g said that oh Jesus and then our main male character is a white boy that is supposed to be helping Keisha start up her uh her and her friends record label um or business record store is a white boy named Tristan Tristan Kristen. Christ, Christian. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. It's very interesting. Very, very interesting. I mean, I, mm. I am also reading Gentleman's Sinner by Jody Ellen Malpas. I did receive this as an ARC from NetGalley. Thank you very much. And I haven't really delved into this story, but I need to because it releases in like two or three days. So I need to get it done and let you guys know about it so you guys will be hearing about that next week as well so that is what i am currently reading let's do a couple rolls on my romanceopoly real quick Alrighty, for that i will be reading hopefully something from austin Rowe, which is a historical romance i think or something like that subway and lgbt lane so make sure you check over on instagram for those tbr picks as well um there were a couple that i forgot to tell you guys about uh i did read securing brenai for romanceopoly um military muse as well Alrighty, so that's it that's all Oh my goodness. Have you read any of the books that I just named off? What are your thoughts on them? Are you participating in Blackathon? Are you guys participating with me for Romance Genrethon? Uh, also, make sure you check out Tuesday's video because Tuesday's video is going to have a bunch of my TBR for Blackathon, Romance Genrethon, and contemporary a thon. So that is going to be the video for the recommendations there. Since there are so many books that I'm going to be recommending and talking about. I won't be doing a, uh, I'm sorry, not recommendations, TBR, my to be read list. 
since there's so many books that I'm be talking about there, I won't be doing a recommendations video, but there will be links in their description. And uh, as always, if there's anything that you want to skip around to, make sure you check those description on the video. Let's discuss in the comments. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, there is a feedback form down in the description box so you guys can help me improve my channel. Thank you for watching and we'll see you guys later.